Hey everyone, Rob here from Gunfather Milsim, and today I'm going to talk about weapons handling and anti-fratricide. Now what is anti-fratricide? It's a big word that basically means don't shoot your brother. Okay, it's basically friendly fire is bad. And I'm not talking about friendly fire in the typical way people think, which is uh, you're in a game and you see a guy and you're not sure he's on your team, so you buck around at him, turns out he was on your team and you thought he was a bad guy, and my bad, you, you killed your buddy. I'm talking about putting yourself in a position that is very unsafe for the guys on your team because you're more concerned with getting kills than their safety. All right? And before I get too far down the path here, I want to kind of set this up by saying that, you know, weapons handling is a thing that you're going to see on a kind of a spectrum in Airsoft and Milsim, okay? So at your local games, like your lower level games, you're going to see some atrocious weapon handling. It's, it's, it is what it is. It's guys that don't know what they don't know. They just started the sport. They don't have any real firearms experience. Um, you're going to see a lot of people getting muzzled, a lot of fingers on triggers when they shouldn't be. It is what it is. Keep your eye pro on at all times. Um, I've noticed as you get to some more of the national events, some of the more kind of larger events where you're going to get more experienced players, um, in general, Airsoft and Milson players have very good weapon handling at that level. They, they keep their finger off trigger and on frame until they're on target and ready to shoot. They don't muzzle anything. They're not willing to, uh, you know, shoot at or you know destroy. We don't really destroy things in airsoft. But the point is, they, they follow the four fundamental rules of firearm safety pretty well, and and they know how to handle those weapons for the most part. Where they really come up short is in their anti-fratricide rules because they don't really have any. And I've I've seen a lot of guys at games and and to be clear, I'm gonna throw some photos up here of guys doing really cringy stuff and they don't know what they don't know i'm sure they're great guys i'm sure they're great players um, I, I don't know any of them personally and if that's you it's not personal i just, I just don't know who you are and, and i can google airsoft cqb and i can find these photos all day of people just doing really cringy anti fratricide violations all day and it, it is what it is it's very common in the sport because nobody really acknowledges it and really nobody really you don't know what you don't know okay so we're going to talk about it the main thing is we're, we're trying to avoid shooting people that are on our team in the back. Okay, it sounds pretty simple, but you'd be amazed um, the violations I see. Now, these particular photos are from a big event that happened in Phoenix in a mall. I believe it was two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. And uh, once again, I don't know one of these guys. Here's just a couple of photos I saw that are, are really bad. Now, you'll notice there's some guys up, up in front, and uh, some people are doing it correctly. Um, they're, they're using cover, they're engaging targets downrange, and then you'll see somebody behind them uh, several feet trying to engage the same target, trying to lean around those guys. Now the problem is, is he doesn't know what the guys up front are going to do. For all he knows, they could step out from cover at any given time and, and get hit in the back because he's shooting. They're not the idiots for stepping out. He's the idiot for being there shooting in that position. They don't have eyes in the back of their head. They don't know what's going on behind them. It's your job to make sure that your fire is safe for everybody. Um, I'm finally going to use this, this cool board here, my, my new marker board. So here's how this works. So we're going to engage this guy. This is a bad guy. This is a good guy. The easiest way to, there's like four rules to this, but that's a little more complicated than you need for airsoft. Don't worry about it. I'm going to keep it real simple, okay? Pretend there's a 45 degree cone coming out behind this guy. This guy's your teammate and he's engaging this target and you want to engage that target as well. In order for you to engage that target safely, you can't be inside that cone, okay? Because that's, if you're in here, you can't account for him stepping to the side. You're too close. There's not enough time for you to stop firing that he's not going to get hit by your fire if you're out here and he starts to step out for whatever reason there's enough space here that you can there's enough reaction time that you've given yourself that you can stop shooting and you're not going to hit this guy so you basically want to stay out of their 45 degree cone now why does it get wider as it goes down this way of course it does because you're going to need more time okay because you, your bbs are going to take longer to go down range you want more time that's why it widens as it goes. Now, now where are the ideal places to, for you to be to safely engage a target? Um, I'm gonna show you three of them. And 
I took some photos with a, a guy on my team named Phil at the game I played last weekend. We're outdoors. Uh, some of these look kind of goofy, but th this is the correct way to do things. Now, the first one, and I'll also show you up here on the board. The first one is the guy in front can take a knee, and this guy can go directly behind him and shoot over the top of him. Now, when you're doing that, you want to actually have body contact. This is not the time to be shy. You want the guy to know you're there. You want it so if he stands up, he's going to hit the bottom of your weapon. Okay, so that, that's the first way to do it. Um, the second way is you're going to be right next to him, okay, and off to the side, this is, he can be standing and you can be kneeling or vice versa. The big thing you're looking for here is what we call muzzle pass meat. You want the, the muzzle of your rifle pass any meat on his body, any, any sort of fleshy parts. This is kind of irrelevant in airsoft. Um, it's important in the real world because when you shoot a real firearm, for the most part, unless it's you know really suppressed, you're going to have this big muzzle blast in the front, okay, of expanding gases. And that muzzle blast, even a, somebody who's right next to the muzzle, it can, it can hurt them. It can, it can blow their ear off. It can blow their face off. It can remove their hearing. It can damage their eyesight. It, 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 it's dangerous. So in the real world, you always want to push that muzzle, you know, past the guy in front of you for safety purposes. Now, yes, in airsoft, the BB's not real. It's not that, or the bullet's not real. It's a BB, and nobody's going to get hurt from that. But if we want to train real world, if we want to, you know, you're, you're wearing the get up, you're wearing the helmet, you're wearing the nods, the, the whole nine, you're looking like a real world guy, and you got a real world replica, let's treat him as such. You know, let's, let's be correct and push that muzzle past the guy in front of us so we don't hurt him. So in the real, God forbid, in the real world, we need to use these seals. We actually look what we know, we look like we know what we're doing, and we're not going to hurt anybody. So that's the second one. The last one is what we call online. It just means we're right next to the guy. We're on the same, you know, skirmish line as he is, and we're engaging the same target. Okay. So those are the three basic ways that we're going to engage with someone at the same target. So let's say for whatever reason none of these are possible. We'll see this a lot. I see this a lot in airsoft and CQB. So you'll have a corner here. It's almost always on a corner. And there'll be a target down here, and he's behind cover. And there'll be a guy on, on this corner, and he's doing his job. And he's trying to engage this guy, and they're, they're kind of having a 50-50 gunfight here. And uh, this second guy comes up, and he'll be hanging out here. Because he's trying to shoot the same target. And obviously, he's violating the rules because he's endangering this guy. And then what's even worse is a third guy will come down here and be doing the same thing. And now he's engaged, endangering both these guys. This is where I see this the most in airsoft is on corners like that huge violation you did this in the real world with a real world team uh, you're getting thrown off a team it's a huge violation you can't have that it's entirely it's way too dangerous okay it just shows your lack of understanding and your lack of professionalism because you're more concerned with killing this guy than you are with the safety of your team and that that's not how you do things in the real world so there's a couple caveats to this a couple things i want to kind of stress so just because this guy is here and they're engaging this guy, and sometimes if there's no way for me to safely engage this guy as a second person, I have to just trust this guy to do his job. That's part of being on a team. And the best thing I can do is watch his flanks and watch his six. That's, that's part of being on a team is trusting the guy in front of you to do his job correctly. And let me tell you, it's, it's really difficult to not, because you want to help, you want to get in the action, but sometimes you just can't. Sometimes the best thing you can do is protect this guy's flanks. Now, just because his cone is right here, you know, this applies to people downrange. It doesn't apply to people on the flanks. If I got another target that all of a sudden shows up over here, there's nothing saying I can't turn and engage that guy. I, I can do that safely all day, okay, or whatever. Um, so it only applies to targets directly downrange. So there are times when you can violate these anti-fratricide rules, but they're few and far between, and you always have to articulate it. You always have to say, why did I take the shot endangering my teammate? And usually it's something to the effect of there was an imminent threat to his safety that if I didn't address, he was going to get hit or shot, and, and I had to address it right away, even though it was a dangerous shot to take. It's usually going to look something like this. Let's say this teammate of mine right here is engaging this guy, or whatever, talking to him, shooting him, doesn't really matter. And, and this third party kind of shows up here. Now here's this, you know, our 45 degree cone where we're not allowed to shoot inside. And let's say that, you know, I'm here. Now, that shot right there 
is a violation of a fratricide rule. But if I don't take that shot, he's going to get hit. In this unique situation, I can articulate because there's no time for me to move up here where it's safe for me to take the shot. There's no time for me to move up online. I can articulate why I'm going to take that shot because if I don't, he's going to get hurt. Okay, that's the kind of articulate. That's the kind of situation I'm talking about, and that's the kind of thing you got to articulate when you violate those anti-fratricide rules. Once again, that's that's not common. That's pretty rare. So, what I would like to see is is more airsoft players because we've all been there. I've, I've, I've played plenty of airsoft CQB and I've been hit in the shot in the back by my own team more times than I can count and it's usually almost always somebody who is really hungry to get some of those shots in and is trying to engage the same target that I'm engaging downrange and he, he doesn't know what he doesn't know he doesn't know that what he's doing is wrong and he doesn't know that you know, he thinks well I can sneak this BB past Rob it's no big deal it, well the problem is, is I'm, he doesn't know what I'm thinking at any moment I'm gonna say well, I'm suppressing this guy now I'm gonna advance or I'm gonna move over to this other piece of cover or whatever and all of a sudden I get shot in the back because of his fire okay so that's all I got for anti-fratricide rules uh, friendly fire is not friendly so uh, try to incorporate these into your play and you're, you're gonna play a lot better you're gonna look a lot sharper you're gonna look like you know what you're doing out there all right thanks for watching